figure it out. Figure it out. You need to figure it out. Figure it out, man. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. All right. Figure it out. Just figure it out. The love of God. Figure it out. And welcome to the FIO Podcast. I am your host as always, Mason Kleist. And if you haven't figured it out by now, you need to figure it out. I got a great, we got a great show today. I got uh, one of my good friends, Tyler Sweeney on the pod. Uh, what's going on, Tyler? How's it going, Mason? Dude, it's been a long time coming. We need you to get on, we need you on here. I know, the Vikings fans gotta represent, right? First Vikings fan on the pod, you know, Trey was on the podcast a few weeks back. He claims he's a Vikings fan, but let's be honest, he's he just rides the wagon here and there. Yeah, he's he's a fan when it's convenient, but he's not a he's not a true skull fan like us. The last time we hung out was in Minnesota in yeah. uh November of last year. Um for the the Lions game, the Vikings at Lions, where the Vikings broke the single game sack record for for the franchise with ten. Uh, so that was a good game to watch. Beat their ass. It was it was cold, but it wasn't like bad cold. It wasn't snowing. You know, it was a little rainy, a little cloudy there in Minnesota, Minneapolis. But I yeah, mean, it was pretty fucking cold. <laughs> I know, but it wasn't like it wasn't like hailing and snowing and whatnot. Yeah, right, right. It wasn't snowy. We were riding around scooters, uh, the oh birds, the lines, whatever the heck they were. The birds with the yeah. with the thirty packs of beer, man. And we just yeah. put it yeah. on the scooter. <laughs> that weekend was so much fun. Like, cause we we did the uh the best pregame ever for just four dudes sitting in a Airbnb. We did yep. the uh the Tell coins. The quarters. The quarters. Gorgeous throwback. Dude, we played that. I played that with like my college roommates for like a month after that too. I was like, guys, I found the greatest game ever. <laughs> and we're going to play. Uh, safe to say they didn't like it too much. But it's yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, well, we were limited in capacity with what we could do in, in the uh, Airbnb. And I think we just we made, made do with what we had. Do you remember that dude, the Airbnb's closet that had all the jerseys in it? Oh, yeah. He had like three different Moss jerseys. Yeah. He had a Chris Carter jersey or something. But he did, yeah, he, but he had like one from every team, but he had like every team's legend, you know? He had like, he had yeah, like a Favre, yeah, yeah. a Deion Sanders, a Montana jersey, a Brady, you know what I mean? Did you steal one of his jerseys? I almost did. I almost stole his Randy Moss, his vintage <laughs> Randy Moss jersey that I wore to the game. I wore to the game. Yeah, but no, that's what I'm saying. So you, you legit wore it to the game. I wore it, yeah, I saw that, and I said, this is part of the package. I'm, I'm doing it. And I wore it, <laughs> and it was great. And then Trey talked me out of it. I Because you guys left early, and it was just me and him. And I said, I'm taking like he. I didn't tell him I was taking it. He saw me packing it up. And he was like, what are you doing? And I said, this guy obviously doesn't care about these enough. <laughs> like, I'm... Oh. God, I'm dude. taking it, and and uh, he said, "Do you really want that karma?" And I said, "What do you mean?" He goes, I, "He goes for for the Vikings. Do you want that karma? Like they're not gonna do, they're not gonna make the playoffs if you do this." Sure as shit, I didn't do it, and they still didn't make the playoffs. So <laughs> fuck, dude. Maybe if you would have stole it, we would have won. That's we what I'm saying. Playoffs. Who knows? So now I think we have to go back to that same Airbnb, and I'm gonna steal the jersey. That's just what All has right, to I'm happen. Down. Book the flight. That would be cool, though. We should go to that same Maybe Airbnb out. every time. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. I wanted to go to the Dallas game this year since I'm in Texas now, and so is Trey. And shit just didn't work out. You know, got the new job now. and, and Yeah, uh, what were you saying on the, uh, the other podcast? You had tickets to, like, box seats or something, and you turned it down? Oh, my God, dude. It was bad. I had box tickets to uh to the uh, the Redskins at the Cowboys in week 17 so it was at uh, the 29th and mm-hmm. box tickets at Jerry World and I could have gone and and I can't because I got people coming into town and it's just not going to work out and I'm so mad and it's weird cuz I didn't even really know the woman that asked me to go but I mean she was pretty nice like I met her at through work and she's like, I know you're a huge football fan. Do you want to come and go to this game? And I'm like, dude, that sounds so much fun, but I can't. Like, I can't believe I had to turn it down. You should have figured it out, man. You should have uh, found a way to go. 
I mean, not a real fan there. I, <laughs> not a real fan. Of, if it was the Vikings, hell yeah. But I mean, it was the freaking Redskins. So yeah, I feel yeah, I feel yeah. Redskins, Cowboys, but still, I don't. I, I'll make it to a Jerry World game eventually. But yeah, that was that was tough as a football fan to turn down there in one of the legendary stadiums, AT and T. But yeah, uh, I'm. In case you didn't know, I'm in El Paso now. I know I didn't want to tell you that until the podcast. Yeah, you haven't. Last I heard, you were in Tyler, Texas, right? I was in Tyler. That's my namesake. East Texas. I was doing an internship out there, and then, like, with two or three weeks left of my internship, I actually got this job. They called me up, but I applied to this job in February, um, and then I just forgot about it. And then they all of a sudden call me, and they're like, "Hey, you got the job." And I'm like, "This? It's eight months later. What? Why? Like, you expect me to still be available?" They're like, "Are you?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, but." <laughs> Yeah, but you shouldn't assume that I don't. Know <laughs> yeah, I was that. pissed. I was like, "This is terrible business. How do you expect to do this?" But it's because it's run by the city. I'm a city employee, so they don't really like. They're not very personable, so you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the benefits, too. the benefits and perks are are worth it, though. It's they got great benefits here, and oh, yeah? a lot of using the shit out of them benefits, huh? A lot of free stuff. Yeah, I'm well. I'm not on the health insurance yet. I'm still on my parents until I'm not even using their benefits. <laughs> I have I'm using some, but I'm using I'm using my parents until I turn 26 because then I legally can't be on theirs anymore and then I'll have my own. You're not 26 yet. I thought you were like 28 by now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just turned 25. I can rent a car now. I can't wait to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool actually. Uh, cause I've rented a car before and I had to actually pay the full price and it's not very cheap. So <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very good. But, uh, how, how's it going with you? So you're in Chicago now where you yep, at? Yeah. Back home, back home. In Chicago area, working, grinding, going to bears games. Uh, I haven't, I'm actually <laughs> going to go to the Vikings bears game. Um, week 17. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like at Soldier Field. Oh, earlier in the season. Good thing you yeah, didn't go to that. Earlier in the season, but something came up and I, I couldn't go. But uh, segue here. I am trying to go to the Vikings Packers game on Monday night. I can't remember if I told you or not. No, you didn't. But that's yeah. the biggest game of the century. So I mean, yeah, I know, man. I'm gonna be uh, gonna be up there for Christmas with the fam, and uh, I'm trying to convince my cousin to buy tickets with me. Because uh, yeah, it's gonna be, be an expensive game on both sides of, of the ball, I think. And um, tickets are expensive. Though. Yeah, what's it's the like, minimum? Like three hundred bucks? I'm I'm seeing like between two hundred and two fifty. Yeah, uh, that's that nosebleeds. It's probably higher now. Who knows? So we'll we'll see if we can swing that. But uh, even even if not, I mean, hit up a, a Vikings bar right around. Wait, they're not in Lambeau. They're in Minnesota this this. Uh, week they're on monday yeah. yeah i know i know i know for some reason i thought you meant in lambo and for this whole time i was thinking Lambo. i was literally about to say i think it's gonna snow but <laughs> they're in a fucking dome <laughs> so it doesn't yeah. matter but no yeah that's i that's that would be the the highlight game of the century to go to that's i my dream is to go to a vikings packers game in lambo because you know i mean u.s bank is amazing but lambo lambo fields historic you know it is yeah it is historic it's like wrigley uh, field you know yeah yeah no no i get that it's one of the ones you got to cross off on the list i have not yet done that um but i actually had a couple buddies that went this last weekend to the bears packers game so oh it was snowing it's a blast like it's everything um they described like so i don't know you know you've never been to soldier field right no so soldier field it takes like forever to get anywhere because it's not it's not close to anything <laughs> and it, everything's just so congested like getting out of there getting in there yeah and then it's just a bad stadium honestly it's a shitty stadium hot take but uh i mean yeah that's another historic stadium too but it's just old school so yeah they need to yeah. like renovate but, it or something the packers they said it's not like that at all like everything's walkable all the bars are right there uh just like a, being in a smaller town that it's bar, easier to kind of navigate. That bar across from US Bank that we went to was pretty awesome. With uh, all those yeah, people there, like Ericsson's or something. Yeah, yeah Ericsson's, Ericsson's good, good shit. I didn't remember that. Yeah, dude. They, like, I'm, I'm trying to go there again, man. The Vikings are the only reason why I would live in Minnesota. That's the only reason I would ever endure cold weather. <laughs> it's for it, I would have season tickets and I'd go to every game. But even their games are indoors, so it's not like I would have to do anything. 
Yeah, yeah, very true. I would uh, love it. If I was, my grandpa used to have tickets, season tickets. He would take my dad and my uncle. I mean, if I was rich, I would have a house in Minnesota and live there 17 weeks out of the year, you know, <laughs> just for football season. And I was so I was so mad because at my job here, I don't I don't have Sundays off, as you know. And I know it sucks because you want to text me stuff during the games, but you've been holding off, and I'm appreciative of that. And yeah, you, uh, you chewed me out one time. Yeah, you I've chewed a lot of people out. I because yeah, dude, what the fuck? I, Come on, stop texting me. Yeah, because you're like, fuck. okay, my bad, and then like ten minutes later, you do it again or something. I'm like, stop. <laughs> but I I spoil it my myself because I'm an idiot and I'm addicted to my phone, so I like. I like co- I've been getting good. I'll cover half of my phone where I know that there's going to be like notifications. Like if I'm just checking fantasy, off. huh? Just turn the notifications off. I know I should just do that. <laughs> it's the easy fix. Come on, man. But I'll check fantasy, right? And I'm like, okay, I could. Ju- I'll just look at my score, and then I'll think, oh, none of, none of my players are on the Vikings or the team that they're playing. So let me check this. And then something will pop up that's just like I remember the Lions game. It was like Marvin Jones third touchdown of the half, and I was like, "Shit!" I was like, <laughs> "Fuck! Why did I see that?" And I'm like, w- "I'm like, we're getting blown out. We're getting blown out. We're gonna lose." And then, sure as hell, I go home and watch the game, and <laughs> Marvin Jones catches four touchdowns, but we won. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I remember telling people at work, I was like, "I don't care if he has ten touchdowns. If we win, that's all I care about." And, that's exactly what happened, so that's nice. But, yeah, that's the only reason I want to live there. And I keep telling my boss, I'm like, can I please have Sundays off? I know I just started, and she's like, no, I can't, I can't do that. And I'm like, all right, but for, like, next year, I just, like, I don't care what you give me days off. For 17 to 20 weeks, I just want Sundays off. Give me Sundays off. For, like, I was like, that's not, there's 52 weeks in a year. That's not even half the year. Then you can do whatever you want after that. I don't care. I'll work seven days a week. Yeah, fair enough. No, I just can't. Seven days do that. a week just for football, dude. I like it. I, I like, like your football, dedication. man. And I and I have DirecTV paying eighty dollars, eighty nine dollars a month for that shit. I can't and I can't even use it because I'm not home dude, to watch. Why are you paying for DirecTV? That's your first mistake. Because they have NFL Sunday Ticket. Yeah, I mean, dude, you can just stream everything on Reddit. That's what everyone says, but I'm not trying to be a degenerate, you know. No, oh, I'm I'm fully in on being a degenerate. No, it's because I can't DVR those games, though, you know? I can't record them. That's true. If yeah, I was, like, off... Well, you could probably find, a, a, like, a pass stream somewhere, I'm sure. See, that just seems so... Like, this, I have stability, and I'm like, okay, I know this is going to work. I know this is going to have the game recorded in HD, you know? I know you're going to have to pay out of your ass to get that service, though, so... I but mean, they- they gave me a they gave me a two hundred fifty dollar gift card though, like a Visa gift card that's been pretty handy. They like they just gave me that like I just got it like a couple weeks ago, so I've been using that here and there, especially for the Christmas shopping and whatnot going on right now. Oh yeah, did you get me that sweater for Christmas? The Vikings uh, decked out holiday sweater. Do you know how much that sweater was? I looked it up after that. It's probably like a hundred bucks. No, it was like. 70 but that's still ridiculous yeah no it is it is a lot for a, for a freaking christmas sweater when i can buy one off amazon that's even uglier that says epstein didn't kill himself for 20 <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> should i do that i have a holiday work party <laughs> coming up and i really want to wear something controversial and offensive should i wear that um or no, or know. that's a gray area i, I wouldn't but... <laughs> <laughs> or it could be. Oh, I, I found an ugly sweater with a bunch of reindeers boning. I like that one. I like where that one's headed. <laughs> yeah, like they're all just doing each other, and it's awesome. And I think I might do that. I think I might have that one since you know we're zookeepers. Wait, aren't, so aren't, aren't reindeers dudes though? So is it dudes boning dudes? You know. <laughs> you know. Obviously, there's female reindeer, but in the in the pictures of it, there's they they both have huge racks. So, it could oh. be two dudes. Okay. It could be. Yeah. Wait, wait. What kind of rats are we talking? <laughs> They're <laughs> antlers. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. We are not doing animal pornography on this show. Yeah. Well, not we're today. Getting kind of off topic there. You want to bring us around back? Yeah. Let's let's enough enough catching up. I mean, let's let's get right into the right into the midst of what we're trying to talk about here. Let's get into some football. I don't think we're going to talk about anything else but football. 
I got nothing else on my list. I know you don't care about anything else, so let's nope. get right into it. Football is it. It's all that matters. I'd like to brag a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, so I used to have a show called Wide Left in undergrad uh, before it got brutally shut down. Thanks, uh, Robbie and Nick. <laughs> and uh, mostly Nick. But uh, we did our in – the, in our last episode, my last episode – we, this was right when Odo Beckham got traded to the Browns, and everyone thought the Browns were contenders. Even, you know, I, my buddy Nick said that they were going to be go 10-6 and six and be a playoff team. So he wasn't too high on them. He wasn't saying they were going to go undefeated or anything like that. But I had an interesting take on who I thought was going to win the AFC, AFC North. And uh, I just want to play the audio from that. From that uh, episode, it'll just be just be a little short one, so just bear with me here, folks. Yeah, run it. Surprise, you guys. No, it doesn't. Because I mean, we talked. About Oops, I dropped my phone. Ravens are winning the AFC You're crazy. North. You're crazy. Hear me out. It's my time to shine. <laughs> the Ravens. They may have lost C.J. Mosley, and they may have lost their emotional leaders in Eric Weddle and uh, Terrell Suggs, T. Sizzle. But it's out with the old and in with the new. They traded Flacco to the to the Broncos. So that just shows that they're serious about Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson's gonna take over this league. I think it's gonna be him and Baker's division for the next, you know, ten years. Um you know, as soon as Big Ben retires and all that good stuff. Um they got they bring in Mark Ingram when they had the second best running attack in the NFL last year. Bring in Mark Ingram now, add that to the mix. He can catch the ball. You think he can't. You think he's a bell cow, but he can catch the ball, too. Maybe not as good as Kamara. I never said he couldn't catch the ball. I you just said he was a bell cow. I said he was the Saints bell cow. Okay, well, he can catch, and he's going to take some pressure off of Lamar Jackson to dump it off to him. They still they have a very respectable O-line. Um, just like kind of like Seattle, they were the number they were the top two rushing teams in the NFL last year. Uh, showing, showing it's Lamar's team, like I said, with Joe Flacco. Um, I... I just I could just see them. I can see them going. I think it's going to be a close match. Ten and six is going to win the division this year. Whoa. Okay. So ten and six obviously wasn't going to win the division this year, but on record I said the Ravens are winning the AFC AFC North, and Lamar Jackson's going to take over this league. I never said MVP, but for me, I thought you know I don't get a lot of stuff on recording, but I thought that was pretty pretty special of me to to be able to predict that. Would you say? Yeah, man, I'd see that uh that's a pretty um pretty good take. I mean, you were squatting on that one for a little bit and it turned out that uh it worked out in your favor there. I I mean, I respect it. It's I just a, saw it, face. man. Like he he's so dynamic with the football. It's like you saw it like in bursts, little little tiny bursts. You saw it and you know that the Ravens have a good organization, they have a good structure, good old line, and they bring in Mark Ingram and people are like Mm-hmm. People weren't even talking about that. Mark Ingram's a good running back. He's a top ten running back this year. He is. Oh, for sure. I think he was top five at one point, right? I mean, I'm just saying talent wise and how good he's been doing. I don't know, like statistically wise, like rushing yards and whatnot. But I know he's not the leading rusher on the team. Obviously, Lamar Jackson is. Right. Right. But um, and I want to play one more audio from from uh, my good friend Nick, who who's an expert on football. Obviously, from this uh, take right here. Here it is. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Lamar Jackson, elite, cannot throw the football. He can't. Doesn't need to correct. <laughs> he can't throw the ball. Look at what happened when the Chargers had another game to prep for him. He's, he's yeah, he was good. he was garbage until he had like ten passing yards until like the fourth quarter. But then he he went off in the fourth. That's all that matters. Not how you start, how you finish. Listen, he, their he best receiver, need to figure it out. Their best receiver is what really off seasons seen. are for. Their best receiver. And then we go into some bullshit receivers. Obviously, Willie Sneed is in a factor. It's Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown, two rookies. Mm-hmm. Like who would have thought? You know, they don't have the weapons. They don't have the big name people. They got Mark Ingram and Lamar Jackson. Those are their big name people. And uh, I don't know. I just I just saw it and I knew. That the Browns were all hype, and I don't believe in just putting like the Rams. The Rams are a perfect example. Yes, they made it to the Super Bowl with a bunch of just randomly good players, but obviously it didn't get them. It didn't win them anything. And look at them this year; they're garbage. Yeah, they are garbage this year. I wouldn't say garbage, but definitely a shell of what they were last year. They weren't. They're not anything near last year. No, no, dude. The fact that they got beat so bad by the Cowboys, like that's ridiculous. Yeah, that was bad. I mean. <laughs> 
That's the really Cowboys bad. don't even get me started. They're just dumpster fire. I mean, the Cowboys definitely have like they were the number one graded offense for a while, but they just weren't getting wins. And it, I feel like they now they've they had that breakout game that we've all been waiting for because they have the the talent, but. I think it's a little too late. I mean, they might go eight and eight, win the damn division, and host a playoff yeah. game. That's what's trash. Yep. That's that what's is, trash. Yeah, that that angers me, but that's a whole other thing. And we'll that's why I can't wait stretch. to get into our our week sixteen picks because uh, you really should have looked at them and and tried to decide who's going to win because there are some tough matchups to choose from in these games where it's like uh, could really go either way. So you got to like and you got to be able to pick them. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't, I don't make the picks. The picks make me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the upset and the game of the week is is a good one for me. So, all right, segueing, segueing off my boasting, my little bragging there. I just, I'm sure we'll get into Lamar Jackson and the and the Ravens later. Um, let's get into something that's been hot right now. Michael Vick, there's a petition going on for him. To not be a Pro Bowl captain, Roger Goodell has came out and said that it does it doesn't matter how many signatures he gets, he's still going to be a Pro Bowl Legends captain. Um, Which is a move that I respect the hell out of Roger Goodell for making. I Normally respect that too. He's like a little bitch and would cower, but he's sticking to his guns regardless of whether it's right or not. I respect him for that. Yeah, and and I mean he hasn't done a lot of things to make me respect him, but exactly. Um, what and I'm not and I'm not saying what what Michael Vick did in his past was right by any means. It was cruel. It was awful. And you especially, cause I know you're such an animal lover too. Of course. And at the time I hated the dude. And, uh, but you know what? He, he, he served his time, man. Like he did, he, he did the time. It's not like these other people that are getting domestic violence charges or rape allegations. And they just, you know, two game suspension or maybe they just or, or in some cases nothing happens you know what i mean mm-hmm. yep yeah michael vick got convicted he went to jail for almost a year i think he went for 11 months did a house arrest he went out of the league for a while and then he came back in he pushed his way in and he had a respectable career and i think he's going to be a hall of famer yeah i i think he should be a hall of famer too i mean just based on his level of play alone but back to the um you know, whether or not he should be a Pro Bowl team captain. I mean, I I could understand the argument against it. I, I, I can. Um, but I'm kind of going to go back to, I mean, they already had reviewed it. They, they I'm sure they did, like, a risk analysis, all that shit. Yeah. And had decided that, you know, Roger, or Roger Goodell or whatever is okay with that. And the NFL is okay with, you know, he's, again, served his time. So, I mean, yeah, and I, that's probably what I would say along the lines of two i mean he did he served his time so I'm, let's all I move have on issue with it um but I, again i could get i could see the arguments against it like why would you promote somebody who has done stuff in his past but then i, I don't know i mean i i get both arguments but i i would have probably agree with you on this one yeah like he like just move on man and it's tough because i do work with so many people that are so passionate about animals and to the point where they're almost blinded. But it's I think it's because I have I I'm on both sides of this. Like I see the animal lover aspect of this and how hurt they could be, but I also see the football side of things and know that what he's done for the game and how good he freaking was when he played. Like Well and, and even out of that too, I mean, outside of just him being a great football player, I mean at the end of the day, I mean he's a human. Human beings make mistakes, right? Yeah. I mean and he's paid for that mistake, uh, you know, both with his his freedom for a while there, and then with, I'm sure financially too, um, you know, just getting back. less work even uh, in the NFL and, and things like that. So I mean, he's he's paid a debt for sure. Um, so I, mean, I guess I mean that's the kind of long lines of like, do you think people deserve second chances? Almost, you know. But it's crazy because what I don't get in. Is is it's just a Pro Bowl, man? Like it's the Pro Bowl captain. Why is everyone making a big deal of this? I can see people making a big deal out of this when he's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. And they're like, we don't want him to be in the Hall of Fame. Like that's the Hall of Fame. That's freaking Canton, Ohio. This is a Pro Bowl. Like people who don't give a shit about the game. Like why? Why are you freaking out over a Pro Bowl? 
Yeah, that that is true. Because now it's just going to come up again. It's just going to come up again in three, four years when he's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yep. And everyone's going to be like, we don't want him in there. And it's like, I honestly forgot about it. Like, I, he, because he, he was in the news so many times, be, just being like in the media, you know, either like doing interviews or like analysis or something like that. Yeah. I honestly forgot about it. And then all of a sudden it gets brought up again. And I'm like, I saw one petition and I was like, all right, whatever. And then it became like this huge thing. And I don't think he spoke on it though. I don't think he ever like ha- had an interview about it. Cause he already, he doesn't have to, he already fucking served his time. He already yeah. talked about it. No, it, that, what was that? Like 10 years ago, move on people. Move on. Yeah. I mean, what is he supposed to apologize for the, to everybody for the rest of his life? He, I mean, he's also it, been donating uh, money to like dog foundations, like humane societies and stuff like that. Like he's been in in that spotlight in a positive sense now. You know what I mean? He st- he keeps pit bulls still, but not for fighting. You know, there is pets. Promotes mm-hmm. good examples. So I don't know. I just it just grinds my gears when I see stuff like that, and I, I like that Roger Goodell came out and really shut everyone up about it. Yeah, again, I, I respect him on that. It's a good move on his part. Segwaying to college football, Joe Burrow wins the Heisman. Uh, first LSU, first or second second LSU player in history. First one since like 1960. I don't even want to remember the guy's name. Um, but just just an amazing season. I remember when people threw him into the conversation after like week three. They beat Texas, I think, or week two they beat Texas, and it was like the biggest. That's when Texas was like top five, ranked top five, and they thought that. They were the hot shit, and then Joe Burrow comes in, and I remember everyone saying, "I think he's a Heisman candidate." I don't think he'll win. I think it's a long shot. Everyone thought Jalen Hurts was going to win, and I said from the beginning, "I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to win." There's no shot. Three Oklahoma quarterbacks win in a row. It's not happening. Yeah, that's true. I mean, honestly, I did like him as a candidate for it, though. Um, oh yeah, Hurts. He's amazing, a, but he's, he's pretty unbelievable. And I don't know the fact that he got cut from Bama too, and then well, not cut, but benched. And then transferred out. Like, I don't know. I see that as like an extra little fuck you to save it, which I'm all about, you know, being a Tennessee fan. Yeah, Tennessee, uh, not to. I mean, they, they ended the year on a hot note, right? Five games in a row they won? Yeah, yeah. They, SEC uh, teams. They turned it around for sure. I don't know if Pruitt is going to continue that, but <laughs> uh, we'll see. I mean, we got a bowl game against Indiana coming up, so yep. I'm stoked for that. Hopefully we can win that and, uh, I'll have some bragging rights over a couple of my buddies here. Are you uh, rooting for LSU in the in the playoffs? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I am such a Coach O fan. It is same, crazy. dude. I'm all in on LSU. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! <laughs> dude, <laughs> did you see where uh, they were in the locker room and uh, yes. he did that speech? Roll out what? Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got me so hyped. I wanted to run through a brick wall. Did you watch Joe Burrow's uh, Heisman acceptance speech? I did not, actually. I did not. You want to fill me in? If you want to cry, just go ahead and watch it. I'm going to tell you that now. Really? Dude, I don't get emotional off stuff like that, but, like, he he couldn't, like, every, like, couple minutes he had to stop because he was getting so emotional. Like, he didn't start, like, breaking down and cry, but he was, like, mainly when he's talking about Coach Oak because he's just, like, because he transferred from Ohio State, didn't play there for three years. Like they took, he's like, oh, you took a chance on me, gave me the keys to the program. Like, who would have thought a kid like from Ohio, like from poverty ridden Ohio parts, is going to be the Heisman, all this stuff? So he's, and his family's sitting there, like hugging on Coach O. Coach O's getting teary eyed. I'm just like, damn. <laughs> this shit's <laughs> wow. emotional. That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I'll have to check it out, I'm sure. Enough about college football. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Uh, we're going to get right into some more NFL. So the Pro Bowl. Hey, before, before we get back to NFL, uh, would you mind if I cut in real quick about some uh, Canadian football league? <laughs> <laughs> is this some kind of sick joke? No, no, I'm not even kidding, man. So uh, The, the floor know. is yours. Go for it. All right. I don't know if you followed along at all. I don't. Okay, <laughs> well, let's let's. Johnny Manziel isn't in it anymore. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh um, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won the Grey Cup. It's been 20-some years since they won it. And uh, my high school quarterback was playing quarterback for them when they won it. So, What's his name? Chris Strebler. 
Chris Struggler? Chris Strevler. Like, S-T-R-E-V-L-A-R, I think. So. Oh, I thought you said Struggler. No, no, Strevler. <laughs> With a V. So, and then they, uh, uh, I saw a couple of videos of him. Uh, he was on, like, the Canadian news channel or whatever. Oh, yeah. Up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> was there a moose in the background? No, but he was wearing this big old fur coat. Like a, probably like a moose coat. Oh, with God. no shirt on, sunglasses, a cowboy hat, and jean shorts Jesus. in Canada in the middle of winter. And I, I had so much respect for him at that moment. Was he hammered? Oh, yeah. Then he was passing out beers on live TV, and then they chugged him. So. Was it like the parade? It was like a parade for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it my was God. at the parade. I probably forgot to say that. But, yeah, it's, it was at the parade. You could tell he's plastered. <laughs> Were you at all friends with him? or? Uh, I, I was – I mean, I knew him. I wasn't really – we wouldn't go hang out, nothing like that. Did you graduate Trent, with him? Uh, Trent was friends with him, though. Okay. So did you guys graduate with him, or is he older? He is Trent's age. Okay. So, like, a year older than you? Yeah, a year older than me. Okay. Well, shit. Yeah. Sounds, yeah, like, sounds like the Minshew. What? Sounds like the Minshew of, of Canadian football. Yeah, kind of, man. Got that going for him. And, the Minshew mania. Uh, yeah, Minshew mania. But I mean – Canadian there was football. Also a guy, um, I don't know. You probably haven't heard this since you haven't heard at all about the CFL. But there was a guy uh, that had made a bet with his buddy that he wasn't going to wear pants. He was wearing shorts. wasn't going <laughs> to wear pants until the Blue Bombers won the Grey Cup. And this was twenty years ago. And he wore shorts the whole he time. He wore shorts in Canada, in Winnipeg, for twenty years until they won it. I don't believe that. No, bro, he did. He did. Like, Look in the up. comfort of your own home, you're telling me that man just didn't put on a pair of sweatpants and go to sleep? No, he, he just went, why, why put on sweatpants? Put on shorts and then put a bike on. I don't know. But wow. he said he got around, um, he got around, like, formal events because he has a kilt. So he'd wear his kilt. I would just wear leggings under my shorts. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's kind of a bitch move, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> or a smart move. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Or I'll just wear a kilt. Fuck it. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I mean, I'm a pretty... Yeah, I don't really like pants. I'm more of a shorts guy, but if I'm in Canada, I might have to suck it up and wear some pants out there. Yeah, I can't do sure. that. Well, I'm excited. You got me excited for the for the CFL now, but what about the yeah. XFL? The XFL is coming soon, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't wait till that comes out. The teams I, are already out. What's that? Wait, it is? It's already out? Yeah. Like no, no like way. like the team names are out, but not like the people on the team. I think the draft, or yeah, I think the draft already happened. The XFL Did draft, it really? Yeah, because I remember seeing someone on on uh, roasting people on Twitter. It was these two guys out of Alabama, or maybe 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 Tennessee. I don't know some team, and they were like nobodies, and they're like, oh, we're not going to play in our bowl game because we don't want to get hurt for the draft. And someone quoted it was like the XFL draft was two months ago. <laughs> 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 Shit. Hey, say what you will, man. I'm excited. I hope it's uh, it's a lot more rowdy than the NFL. And, Dude, yeah, hell uh, yeah. They get like more hard hits because that's the one thing I miss from the NFL, man. Is uh, they they treat them they treat them like little girls now. I feel like it's you can't hit anybody. Yeah, the no fun league, man. I mean, you can't you can't barely you can't hit anybody. But um, yeah. It, uh, yeah, it's which I mean, yeah, I get safety concerns, all that, but but they've gotten better with like the celebrations. They used to not do a lot of celebration, except who was it? Uh, Marcus Peters gets a pick six and then jumps in the uh, into the stands and chugs a beer or something like that with, with the friend with the fan. It was like the end of the game though; like the game was over, and um, he and it was just like a can, like it looked like an empty can. He just crushed it over his helmet, and there was like he opened his mouth, like beer was coming in, and he got fined like twenty thousand for that. Like, come on, man. Oh, my God. Let, the, let, let him have some fun. Like, yeah. I, I understand if what you want to think of it like work. Like, yeah, you shouldn't do that at work. shouldn't drink on the job. But <laughs> it's not like he had to go play another half. You know what I mean? You don't see yeah, anybody yeah, doing that true. at halftime. And his job, his shift was over. <laughs> yeah, he clocked out at that point. <laughs> yeah. He just still has his uniform on. That's all. Yeah. Jeez. Which, I mean, that's just frowned upon. I don't think he should be fine. Yeah, he def- I don't know. That was definitely a... Uh, Something that pissed me off, but 
Let's get into the Pro Bowl. I know you haven't seen the Pro Bowl uh, roster, so this will all be brand new for you. Correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, I have not seen it. Who? Let me ask you, who do you think uh, has the most Pro Bowlers on the team, like out of one team? Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's in the AFC. I mean, probably the Patriots. Final answer? Well, the, I feel like the fact that you're saying that, it's, it's probably not. But, yeah, I'm going to say Patriots. <laughs> it is the Ravens. That was my second guess. The Ravens yeah. have 12 Pro Bowlers. Good Lord. <laughs> Holy shit. That's actually a lot. 12, yeah. I mean, they have Justin Tucker, so that takes care of the kicker. Marcus Peters, Marshall Yonda, Ronnie Stanley. There's a bunch of linemen. Earl Thomas, Lamar, Mark Ingram, Mark Andrews. Bunch of randos. I don't even know half of them. Weird. But all right, I'm going to go over some of the the Pro Bowl uh, people here. So for the quarterbacks, the NFC, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees. For the AFC, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson. Um, it's tough. Tough to say that. It's tough to say that Kirk got snubbed when you actually see who the quarterbacks are. Aaron Rodgers obviously is just a damn fucking. Uh, beauty contest, popularity contest, because uh, I'm pretty sure Cousins is statistically better than Rodgers right now. 25 or 26 touchdowns, four interceptions, five interceptions. Rodgers probably yeah, has less but, interceptions. I mean, like, how are you not going to have Aaron Rodgers go to the Pro Bowl, dude? I mean, how are you not going to have Tom Brady? You know, how are you not going to have Tom Brady in the Pro Bowl? They don't. He's not going. He's not. No, he's not. It's Deshaun, Patrick Mahomes, and Lamar, and Lamar Jackson. Really? Wow. Right. Deshaun Watson beat him, so, I mean, that makes a little sense, I guess. Uh, for the running backs, our boy Dalvin Cook got the most votes for the NFC. And then Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, and for the fullback, Kyle Juszczyk, which I'm pissed about. C.J. Ham got snubbed. Man, what a story C.J. Ham was. And I think he's doing better than Juszczyk. He's got, like, three or four touchdowns on the year. That's, like, that's good for a fullback. Yeah, that is pretty good. So I was kind of mad about that, but it's just because he's on the Niners. Um, and then for the AFC, Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, and then the Baltimore's fullback made it. I've never even heard of this by Patrick Ricard. I mean, I, I, I think the fullback position is really underrated, but I'm glad Dalvin Cook got in there. So that's one Viking. Wide receivers is interesting. The entire NFC, uh, wide receivers is all from the, A- in the NFC South. So, Michael Thomas, obviously, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, first time, and Mike Evans. Two Bucks, a Falcon, and a Saint. So, sorry, Panthers, you don't have any good wide receivers. Christian McCaffrey is your best wide receiver. But, yeah, that's, that's crazy, don't you think? Yeah, that is a little weird. Two uh, Bucks. I mean, Godwin and Evans are, are top three in, the, in receiving yards, and Michael Thomas is number one. And that's crazy, just what their record shows, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, for I the mean, Michael Michael Thomas is amazing. He deserves to be there. The other two, I mean, Chris Godwin's good. Dude, Chris Godwin's really good. He deserves yeah, it. Yeah, but uh, it's tough, man. Know. It's yeah, tough. Yeah, it is tough. I mean, uh, you can't say Diggs. Thielen obviously was hurt, so tough for the Vikings there. Um, AFC: yeah. Keenan Allen, Tyree Kill, DeAndre Hopkins, and an interesting one here. This last one: Jarvis Landry over Odell Beckham. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, but OBJ hasn't done shit this year. Right? I know, but it's a fucking popularity contest. You'd think he'd that's, be over well, that's true. Very true. Like, you'd think he'd... he'd I think people he'd... are sick of his shit, honestly, man. Like, I'm... there comes a point, like, where you... I mean, I get it, like, like it draws attention and all that, and uh, all his acting and everything, but there's a, there's a time where, like, people get sick of his shit, I think. I think Odell Beckham's been really good this year, though. Like, really good with his emotions. Like, if you think about, like, when he was on the Giants, he's, like, proposing to kicking nets. He's punching the kicking nets. He's complaining, you know, calling out teammates and whatnot. He's been really quiet on the Browns. He's not the problem. Like, He's I, been asking for a trade, though, hasn't that's he? That's only he been, was... like, the last few weeks, but that's everybody's. And he's not... Like, the only noise he's making, like, people ask him, he, he's like, this is where I want to be right now, this is where I'm at right now, so I'm going to focus on right now. But then he goes on the field and says, come get me. That's different. That's not, like, causing, 
That's not really being a cancer. And I will say, like, I like to I like to gloat like I did earlier about being right about the Ravens. I will do this is like a Colin Cowherd where I was right, where I was wrong. Where I was wrong was I said OBJ is a cancer and he'll uh take down the the Browns. But he's been fine. The the cancer's Baker Mayfield. <laughs> no. Freddie I Kitchens. I disagree. Freddie Kitchens, I'll give you that one. But Baker, Baker talks too much. He talks too much. He talks too much, and he's not good. He hasn't won anything. He's not won anything. He has more interceptions than touchdowns, I'm pretty sure. Actually, no, he probably has more touchdowns. I think he has 46 touchdowns in two seasons. He's already top 10 in the Browns franchise in in, t- in touchdowns. Think, Let that sink in. That's crazy. It's his second year. That's how bad the Browns are. Uh, anyway, on still, still doing the Pro Bowl here. Tight ends, George Kittle, Zach Ertz, and AFC Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey. Uh, yeah, when you got guys like Kittle and Ertz, it's tough to throw Rudolph in there. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's been phenomenal. It's just really – those guys are in the he's, media. He's really picked it up the second half of the season. I mean – Six touchdowns. He really didn't do much. I mean, he didn't do much of anything. And then second half, uh, he's just getting a touchdown every like every every game, every other game. And I don't know. His, his level of play just really increased the second season – or second half of the season. Yeah, he um those one handed catches were great, especially that one oh, against the Cowboys. No. I've lost it when he does that because I had him on my fantasy team for a while, and uh, yeah, it, that like that won the game for me one game, uh, one matchup. And, for uh, real? Uh, yeah, yeah. I started him one week, I think I can't remember when, but he definitely caught a touchdown in the week I started him, and I was really happy about that. Yeah, like Kirk was straight up throwing it away one time. Yeah, and, he just said uh, mine. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, fuck it, I'm going to try it. And then he got it. <laughs> For big old meaty paws. I know, nice. I love I love Kyle Rudolph. But I also like Irv Smith, man. I think he's like the more prototypical tight end right now that you see in the league, yeah. the athletic guy that can go up and catch yeah. it. I like him a lot, too. Yeah, yeah, that touchdown that he had against the Chargers, our first touchdown, that was a good one. You saw that where he laid out? Yep. That was amazing. Yeah, he's, he's, he might be a little more of an athlete than, than Rudolph. I mean, Rudolph's definitely A bigger. little bit more? Try a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph is the is a younger Jason Witten, <laughs> but yeah, he can he can move it. Actually, very true. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that lasts in league. Look at J- Jason Witten's like freaking ninety, and he's still in league. So look at that. That's true. That's true. Uh, for corners, uh, dude, oh, back to back to Kyle Rudolph. I don't know if you saw on Skull Bros the uh, you know the Instagram. Yeah, 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 I like that guy. Yeah, uh, so they posted. Uh, a thing from Kyle Rudolph today saying that um, they're giving out two free tickets to the Packers. I saw that. Game. Yeah, so I, and it was only on Twitter. So I went and created a Twitter account just so I could retweet that for a chance to win two tickets. Wow. <laughs> you want me so, to do it so in case I win, I can give you the tickets? Yes. Yeah, go do it. Go I would it. sell them to you for $600. A, uh, a piece. No. <laughs> Uh, onto the cornerbacks for the NFL: Marshawn Lattimore, Richard, or NFC. I'm sorry, Marshawn Lattimore, Richard Sherman, <laughs> Darius Slay, and Jalen Ramsey. Darius Slay's a little. I mean, eh, he's good, but he's on the Lions. Like, why? I don't know why he. I can't think of anybody better right now, but definitely not Rhodes. Uh, Rhodes does not deserve to be on this list anywhere close to a Pro Bowl list. No, dude, he's been awful this year. I'm sick of Rhodes. If I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to say that right now. Because every time he gets beat, he has to do what's called the loser's limp, where he pretends like he's hurt, comes up, limps off the field, and three plays later, he's in. But those three plays when he's not in, they go after the rookie or something on, it's a mismatch, and then we get a touchdown scored on us, and then the camera goes right to him, like, oh, he's hurt. You know what I mean? I'm just sick of it. And, I mean, he came out and apologized, and said he needs to get better. Next, and then the next week comes and he doesn't get any better. He did force a fumble last week. I will give him that, but that was after he got toasted too many times. And he's also leading well, the league. And in, the Chargers just couldn't hang out of the ball for their damn life, you know. This last week. No, the Lions game. He got a he got a turnover though too. I think, or was it this past uh, one? Did he get a turnover in this one? I don't know. Yeah, don't, he I did. Think, I don't think he did. He. Yeah, he he put his helmet in on um, Melvin Ingram or Melvin Gordon. And he, he fumbled twice. Man, the Chargers should have just not yes. had the buttered popcorn. It, yeah. They had the buttered yeah, popcorn before the game. They, they sat Melvin Gordon. What do you think of that? I mean, I would have too. You got, you got a guy like Austin Eckler in there. I mean, he's good. I think Austin Eckler could be an, an easy three-down back. 
And he's cheaper. So I was pissed they even gave Melvin Gordon the ball. Or, like, gave him a chance to come back. You know what I mean? Because it hasn't made them any better. But when you got a guy like Phillip Rivers in there, you can't you can't win games. Uh, for the AFC, obviously, Stephon Gilmore. He's the Defensive Player of the Year front runner, even though I think uh, we're going to get into that later. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, and Tredavious White, who's had a breakout season two for the Bills. Uh, let's see. Safeties, Buda Baker, Eddie Jackson, obviously our boy Harry Smith, the hitman. That's his yeah, yeah. Sixth, sixth Pro Bowl. Uh, and then for the AFC, Earl Thomas, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Jamal Adams. Uh, Harrison Smith has just been great his whole career. I think he's on to a Hall of Fame career. He's going to keep going. He's going to keep making Pro Bowls every year. Um, but I'm sick of seeing him in the Pro Bowl. I want to see him in a different bowl if you catch my drift. So Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get to the defensive ends. Cameron Jordan, Nick Bosa, and our boy Daniel Hunter for his first Pro Bowl selection. Mm. Man amongst boys. <laughs> uh, and then for the AFC, Joey Bosa, Calais Campbell, Frank Clark. So Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, both the Bosa bros, both in the Pro Bowl for them. And uh, they seem to be the guys ahead of Daniil Hunter for Defensive Player of the Year candidate as well, even though Daniil Hunter has way more sex than all of them. So just saying that now. And more forced fumbles, more takeaways and stuff. So, but it's because he plays for a small market, uh, Minnesota Vikings. That's why. You know, they don't have the Chargers out there and the San Francisco's out there. Just pisses me off. I mean, I think the market's getting bigger for the Vikings, though. I mean, I mean yeah, but it's still the Vikings. Like, we're going to get into, you know, Eric Kendricks and why I think he snubbed, too. Yeah. Cause we're getting... did, I mean, did you see the game last weekend? Half the half the fans in the stadium, at the Chargers stadium, were Vikings fans. That's every Chargers game, though. They don't have a good fan base. Yeah, well... <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, it just seemed—it seemed like there was more purple than than blue and gold there. No, there was a, there was way more purple. I could hear them doing the skull chant over anything else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I, I think I think overall the market's growing for the Vikings. So. Oh yeah, in El Paso, here in El Paso. Oh my God, I I went week one. I went to a Hooters to watch the football game, and there was the Falcons Vikings game, and there was like twenty Vikings fans there. I'm not joking. Really? Yeah. Down in El Paso. Man. Yeah. And I went up to him. I was like, whoa. I was like, where? And, I'll, you know, a lot of them weren't even from Minnesota. They were like, nah, man. We just, we we liked watching them back in the 90s. We liked Chris Carter and and uh, Randy Moss. And we just kept watching them. And we like them a lot. And I'm like, shit, man. And I was like, we need, we need the fans. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, they were man. so nice. They're like, dude, we're here every Sunday. We've been here every Sunday for 10 years. Like, you can come anytime you want, and we'll be here, and we'll chill with you. They, like, bought me a beer and stuff. It was awesome. Really? Yeah. I have to go back at all? No, because I got DirecTV, and I work Sundays, so it's not like oh, I could go hang right. out with them anyway. Yeah, you're working Sundays, yeah. But, my, I mean, shit, Monday night, maybe. My, my, I'm off Monday, so I got the whole day to day drink and then go to the game if I wanted oh, to. Oh, that's dangerous. Monday. That is dangerous, because if we lose, I'll be fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not just going to work, but... uh. Outside linebackers for the Pro Bowl. We got Chandler Jones, Khalil Mack, overrated, and uh, Shaquille Barrett. Shaquille Barrett's that guy from the Bucks that had like, he had like seven sacks in three games. It was unbelievable. Like the first three games. And then obviously he's had like sacks here and there. So he's up there on the sack list, but it's only because he went off in the beginning. Just like the yeah. Vikings. Vikings had seven turnovers against the Chargers, and now we're like third in turnovers. It's only because of that one game we're third in turnovers now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, one game can make all the difference, though, right? So, But it's just like a stat booster, you know what I mean? But Yeah, right, right. For the AFC, Matt Judon from the Ravens, Von Miller, and TJ Watt. So uh, Von Miller is like, like eighth or ninth Pro Bowl for him. Inside linebackers, Bobby Wagner, Luke Keekley, Deontay Dante Hightower, and Darius Leonard. Um, and for the special teams, Will Lutz, Tress Way, Tress Way, that's a cool name, Rick Lovato, Deontay Harris, Cordero Patterson for the Bears, Hey, Matthew Slater, Nicole Hardman, Morgan Cox, Brett Kern, Justin Tucker. I like Nicole Hardman. I, I like, like him too. Hardman a lot. He's pretty good. I'm just so, dude, I'm so mad Eric Kendricks didn't make the Pro Bowl. I'm so mad. Yeah, Luke Keekley, Bobby Wagner, they're amazing, but like. 
Keekly, I think I think uh, he. I don't even think he's top five in pro, pro Football Focus. Let me just go over some stats right now. This year, Eric Kendricks broke Pro Football Focus's record for most single season pass breakups by a linebacker. He's the highest graded linebacker with ninety point eight. Has allowed the lowest completion percentage of any linebacker. Has the fifth most run stops by any player. Ranks third in pass pressure productivity among linebackers. And like I said, is the highest graded linebacker in football. But he's not a Pro Bowler. Tell me how that works. Tell me how that works. Uh, yeah, that's it's a popularity contest. It's so frustrating to see that. You know, like like Anthony Barr made it last year, and like I was kind of surprised. I was like, uh, really? Anthony Barr? I mean, he he quietly had a good year, but not like the year that Eric Hendricks is having this year, and that just makes me so mad. But anyway, we won't talk any more about the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl sucks. I hope I don't have to watch any of my players, any of our players in the in the Pro Bowl. I hope we're playing for a different After bowl. Talking about the Pro Bowl for I don't know twenty minutes. Yeah, the Pro Bowl sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Um, so did you watch? I just want to bring up some. Did you watch the Bears Packers game? Uh, I watched the tail end of it. So I saw like the last drive for sure. You saw the lateral, the failed yeah, lateral. They almost had it. They were so close. But did you see it break down? They tossed it to that tight end. I don't know his name. And he's, and, and he had, who was it? Anthony Miller or somebody wide open to his right. The wide receiver. Yep. And, and he had a blocker. He had a blocker in front of him and they could have won. And the dude tried to be a hero and take it all the way to the house. And he got tackled. <laughs> he got greedy. Jesus. They were so close. We needed that. We need the Packers to lose, man. <laughs> I know. I know. But, but then that also makes me nervous. Cause then that kind of puts the bears back in it. So fuck the bears. Fuck Dolphins. the Bears. <laughs> but um, how how cool would this be? Uh, Kyle Sloter, obviously the former backup quarterback for the Vikings. Yes. Preseason god for the Vikings. <laughs> uh, he's, on the, he's on the Lions now, if you didn't know that. I actually did not know that. And they're talking about maybe starting him week 17 against the Packers. Like okay. how, coo- how cool would that be if he, if he beats the Packers for us and we just <laughs> mosey on into the, in the NFC North title? Yeah, I, I mean, that'd be really cool, but I think that's kind of wishful thinking there. I don't know. Sloters, Sloters is the man. And I think he's definitely da- better than David Blow. Yeah, but the Lions suck. The Lions do suck. It's tough. They have had they were in a lot of games this year, too. That's why I never really counted them out whenever we played them. They were always so tough, but I don't know. It just makes me so mad. But uh, I just think the NFC is wide open. I mean, I don't know about you. Uh, we're one game back from the first seed. I know we were talking earlier. You were saying that it'd be a long shot for us to get the number one seed, but definitely we could finish better than sixth. We could definitely yes. finish better than sixth seed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely a possibility. And I looked it up from what we were talking about earlier. I even pulled it up somewhere on my computer if it wants to load for me. Um, like exactly what we need to do to get the first seed. Okay. And it's, it's absurd. So... I mean, it's just stupid though because, like, how how crazy would that be if we went out, go twelve and four, and somehow are the sixth seed in the NFC? That just shows how much tougher the NFC is than the AFC. You know? Oh, absolutely. The, the yeah, AFC's got two tougher. two legit contenders, in my opinion. Um, I know you shouldn't count out the Patriots, but God, it's really tough to count them out. But I'm go- I would have to go with the Chiefs and the Ravens right now. They're the, they're the two teams that would scare me the most in the. Out of the AFC, I'm not too afraid about. I'm not too afraid of the Texans, or I mean the Patriots. I mean they got Brady, but man, they are banged up. Man, they are not. They are just. It's and I've always been. I've always been told not to bet against Brady, especially when the postseason comes. But I might be betting against Brady. Yeah, I might have to. But, I don't know. It's tough. You you can't. You never really want to bet against against Brady and Belichick, but. Their offensive line is not looking good this year. I mean, their defense is very, very good, but, you, I mean, you don't know if they can always get it done. So, I get where you're coming from on that. I mean, yeah, Stephon Gilmore is probably going to be the defensive player of the year, but it pisses me off because he's got so many interceptions. But look who the quarterbacks are against. It's all against trash teams. You know, he's not picking off Drew Brees or anybody, Aaron Rodgers, none of those guys. Just makes me mad. Daniel Hunter is such a snub for the – Defensive player of the year. I think he's got a legit chance to win. And I just think that would be so awesome. Because I've been such a big fan of his. 
I want to get his jersey so bad, but I already have a defensive player's jersey. I'm getting an yeah, Adam Thielen you got jersey. Bars, right? I'm getting a white Adam Thielen jersey. That's what's happening. I was going to buy it. Ooh. My dad said I could buy it for, and he'd give me money for it for my Christmas present from him. And I go online to go look at it, and it's and all the larges are sold out. Oh, no. Yeah. I was thinking about it. They have an XL, but the large that I have, that the Anthony Barr large, it fits me perfectly. So, like, like it's not too big, not too small. So, like, that's why, like, if I'm going to purchase an Adam Thielen jersey I'm going to have forever, I want it to fit me. I want it to be perfect. So like, Yeah, that's true. But probably wait then. Yeah, but um, I want it. Right I, got the, I got what it would take for the Vikings Let's see it. to get Let's hear it. the number one seed. So, the only way that it happens if the Vikings finish 12-4 and four and no other team in the NFC reaches 12 wins, which would mean the the 49ers <laughs> and the Seahawks would have to tie in Week 17. So every, everybody has to lose out, we have to win out, and then the 49ers and Seahawks have to tie. <laughs> I mean, shit, those are two good teams, man. What if it does come down to that? Yeah, but they have to lose the rest of their games. I guess that would we would have to see what they're. I mean, we're we're gonna do our picks later, so I guess we'll see there. Yeah. But shit, <laughs> I just want to. You know, I know we probably won't get the number one seed, but damn, would it be great to just take the NFC North under the Packers' fucking faces? You know yeah, what I mean? I, that's, that's all I want. Like I'll they've want, had it all year. The they've had it all year, and then we just we just go. Nope, that's mine. Yeah. Like the kings minute. of the North. Oh, the Vikings. They're supposed to be the kings of the north. That's how it works. I, I mean, I mean, let me. So, so all that needs to happen. So, what you're trying to tell me is, you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there is a chance. There is a chance. I love that meme. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> the dumb and dumber one, um, dude. You know what? You know what I got coming up now. I feel like such an adult now because uh, we got. I got Secret Santa's galore for my uh, for my work here. Do you guys do that at your work? Uh, no, we do not. Not even like White Elephant, Secret Santa, nothing like that. No, because I mean, it's it's too like it's too big. Like, I guess just, yeah, it wouldn't work. Yeah. See, like at my at my zoo here, they did uh they made this Facebook group, and it, it's funny they did this thing called Santa Paws, so it's like Secret Santa Paws. And it's not for us, it's for our pets. So, like, if someone had a dog and I matched with them, I would have to buy their dog a present. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they make, like, a wish list. Like, oh, he wants a new chew toy or something like that. And I don't have a dog, and I wanted to be in it. And I said, and I said but I had frogs. And they're like, what the fuck am I supposed to get a frog? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, but you better figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, I don't know, just go find him a cool log outside. I'm sure he'll love it. So, like... Yeah, fucking, he'll be stoked. Yeah, just a little twig. He'll, he's that'll amuse him for days. Yeah, give me, give me some flies or something. I don't care. I, I just thought it was funny, but uh, and yeah, and then I have a secret Santa with like my area, like my clique of people that are at the zoo, and I actually got matched with someone I'm not very fond of, and I don't, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> get him a gag gift. Like I want to get something. I want to get. I want to get something that's like bad, like but but I pretend like it's really good, so they can't get mad. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm saying, get a gag gift, or get them get them like a book. Like who the fuck wants to get a book? You know? But I'll be like, oh, this is a really good book, and you're like you can't be mad if someone's like, oh, he really likes this book. Thanks, yeah. you know. <laughs> you gotta read it. It's bestseller. Uh, whatever nominated. I don't even know any fucking writing awards but the yeah. the nobel peace prize no that's not no 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 no. maybe pulitzer pulitzer something prize, like that. that sounds right but it, it has to be a really dumb book though like like captain underpants or something <laughs> <laughs> magic some, tree house some fucking magic tree house or like something tree. in the middle of the book i just write like little shit talks like you're nothing <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <laughs> so when they read it like 40 years from now they're like fuck that guy <laughs> Jeez, man, you must really hate this guy, huh? <laughs> no, it just, it's just, an, I don't really hate anybody. It's just, they just annoy me sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just like, the, you don't like a know-it-all. And you don't like people that correct you a lot. So, like, that's pretty much what it is. So, but I mean, they're, they they all mean they all mean well. We all get along at work. It's That's all that matters. So, uh, there's no really hostility there. 
That's all that matters. But um, yeah. segueing back into football, Drew Brees passes Peyton Manning with 540 touchdowns, number one overall in touchdown passes. Unbelievable. Um, it just makes it just begs the question. Brady's right there. He's 538. So I mean, I feel like Brees is just going to keep playing until Brady retires, and then he's going to say, "This is mine. I'm not letting Brady have this. Yeah, this is mine." Yeah. So uh, I th- I feel like Brady's probably in better shape than Breeze, though, you know? I mean... Brady's in better shape? What? What do you mean? Brady's in better shape? Shape. I mean, yeah, but look who's doing better with their team. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he's not doing better, but I'm saying... Breeze still has a cannon. Lasting longer. I think Brady would last longer just because his body, it won't fall apart as quick. I mean, dude... He's uh, Drew Brees down in New Orleans, man. I mean, he's he's eating that gumbo, uh, living it up on living it the up crawfish, on, uh, Bourbon Street, with Coach O. Yeah, <laughs> hanging out with Coach O, eating some crawfish. <laughs> Jesus, um, but it begs the question: with two minutes left, <coughs> who are you taking, Brady or Brees? With their respective coaches, yes. Uh, Brady. I think I'm going Brady, dude. Brady and Belichick. I mean, something about their connection. Brady over Breeze? Yeah, I think so. Two minutes left? Oof. That's tough. How many times have they done that and come back and won it? I'm talking about now. Do you think he can do that now? He's 42. With who? His best receiver is Julian Edelman, who's well, okay, pretty okay, much that's broken. What I'm so I mean, Brees has Michael Thomas, who's a fucking immaculate receiver. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. Brady's best receiver is probably Edelman, which he's a good receiver, but he's he's, he's banged not, up. Yeah, he, well, he's banged up. And he's not the he's not the guy. You know what I mean? Like he's he's a good add on, but he can't be like the show out star. Like right now, Brees is a top five quarterback. Like right now. I yeah. think he's a top yeah, five. Yeah, Brady is not agree. even top ten. I wouldn't even say he's top fifteen. All right, so throw Brady on New Orleans and throw They're undefeated. Okay, and then throw Breeze on New England. Not even that. Just give Brady Michael Thomas. It's over. Because the page the Patriots have a better defense than than New Orleans. Yeah. So that's what's carrying well, Brady that's is his defense. What I'm saying, though. So put put Brady on, on the, the Saints. Saints. And then put Breeze on New England. You give Brady Kamara. You give him Kamara and Michael Thomas. <sighs> it's over, man. It's <laughs> yeah, over. Well, but you're you're saying you're saying Breeze is better than Brady, so Breeze should be able to make up for that, right? Breeze with Edelman, <sighs> and that's it. He ain't got, he ain't got nobody else. No Josh Gordon. No Gronk. Nothing. Yeah, I forgot Josh Gordon's gone now, too. Yeah. He's been gone. That's why everyone's like, why would they get rid of him? And then look at that. Now he's suspended indefinitely. He can't stay yep. off the weed. The weed. <laughs> I'm so sick of people giving him giving him so many chances. It's, it's done. You're done, man. I understand that without football, he'd probably be dead in the ditch right now. But you've had your chance. Give yeah. somebody else a chance. You know? I'll tell you what, man. He hasn't figured it out. He has not figured it out. But I would still rather have Josh Gordon in the league than Antonio Brown. Oh, absolutely. Antonio Brown is a basket case. Can't can't go a, can't go an episode without talking about him. Good lord. He's he could he could compete for the FIO player of the year. I do yeah, a, I usually do an good. FIO player of the week every week. And I have I have an FIO person of the week and I'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. But um yeah, I think Antonio Brown. I don't, I don't even want to talk anymore about him. He, his his fucking Twitter tirade is it pisses me off. It's just a constant cycle of him blowing up, apologizing, and then going back to blowing up again. Constant cycle. Yeah, I mean, begs to be on the Patriots. He's, probably, he's got some mental health issues. I think I mean, he's got CTE. Don't you remember that hit that Vontez Burfict had on him in 2015? Knocked him out un- unconscious. Ever since then, he's been a fucking basket case. Think about <laughs> it. He's a CTE. Early onset. It's got to be. I want to segue into fantasy football. Are you in the championships? Uh, I'm 
in the playoffs for both of them. Uh, one, I, with the Tennessee boys, I lost first round. Oof. And then my work league, I just lost this last round. Damn. It sucks, man. I went up against uh, Christian McCaffrey and Kenyon Drake and uh, <laughs> just couldn't get it done. <laughs> Four touchdowns, Kenyon Drake. What yeah. happened to David Johnson? <laughs> Dude, I, David Johnson, he's not good, man. He really isn't. I've been on this for, like, years now. I'm saying every year. I mean, he's he's a, he's an okay running back. But he had the volume. Fantasy wise, dude. Fantasy wise, he just can't get it done. I mean, his rookie year, he was unbelievable. He was like what Todd Gurley was last year. He was like what Christian McCaffrey is this year. He was the best player in fantasy. And then he got hurt the next year, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not on the David Johnson train. I'm pissed. I traded Kenyon Drake. Oh, when he first got to the Cardinals, I traded him in like a group trade. He was just kind of a throw-in for no. Sa- for Saquon Barkley, honestly. I have the trade up right here. I traded for Saquon Barkley. I traded Tyler Lockett, Austin Eckler, and I threw in Kenyon Drake. I was like, here you go. You can have him too. And that's a fucking good three right there now. Just, <laughs> just for Saquon? That's that, yeah, just for Saquon. But – but, that was yeah. right when that was right when Eckler was not doing anything anymore because Melvin Gordon was back, so his value was down. Tyler yeah, Lockett, dude, his solid. his value was very up, so I was like, "Here you go." And then Kenny Drake was Kenny Drake, bro. Who gives a, he, he, nobody thought he was going to be this good, so I was I was like, "I want Saquon Barkley," and he's been a disappointment up until this past week. He had two touchdowns against Miami, thirty points, so that was good. I scored 194 points in my semifinal round, and I am into the championship round against Robbie. Uh, so that is going to be an interesting matchup. I want to tell I want to I want to tell you who's on my team right now. I'm not okay. going to oh, just here's my starting lineup. Drew Brees picked him up when he was someone he he got hurt. Someone dropped him. I said idiot, idiot. Picked him up and left him on my bench for six weeks. I said I'll wait for you, Daddy. I will wait for you, Daddy Breeze, <laughs> Daddy Drew, and uh, yeah, and he's been great since I, since he's been healthy. Uh, then Christian McCaffrey, best player in fantasy history, so he thirty seven points a week, pretty much. Then I had Saquon, Saquon's my RB two. That's a pretty good combo right there. Yeah, pretty damn good. Cooper Cup, who's been, uh, he was on a tear for about six hit, weeks. Hit or miss, man. He's either on or he's he just doesn't do anything. I mean, he was a top five receiver for a while and then all of a sudden just stopped giving him the ball yeah. uh, i had mike evans but he got hurt so but i had him all year so that's another big name guy but now i have aj brown the only a brown that should be in the league but aj brown that great rookie uh wide receiver out of ten- uh, the tennessee titans and he's balling out right now he had 11 catches uh, in that last game aaron jones as my rb3 my third my flex uh san fran's defense and harrison butker so pretty solid starting lineup there yeah dude how'd you get on them running backs that's crazy um i traded man you gotta you you gotta pray on the week pray on the week the guys that the best time to trade is what i tell people is week three week three when someone's owing two they're freaking out they're like god i gotta win i'm owing two and especially if you have a bad punishment in your league you just gotta be like all right man this is the thing you gotta win right now so you gotta trade me your best player for a bunch of these scrubs to balance out your team. <laughs> that's not the word word for word what I say, but you know, like that's what I got Cooper Cup when he was when he, he was I got Cooper Cup and Aaron Jones in the same in the same one and I had who did I give him? I don't even remember. Oh wait, I have the I have the draft right here. I have it right here. I got Cooper Cup, Delaney Walker and Aaron Jones for Mark Andrews, Todd Gurley and Sammy Watkins. So I traded Gurley and Andrews when they were like... Dude, you made off on that trade. Thank you. But this was when Aaron Jones and Cooper Cup were not producing. But I knew Aaron Jones and Cooper Cup, they're late bloomers. Last season, they did the same shit. They didn't really do much. And then like later in the year, they did good. Well, and Sammy, Sammy Watkins is the bum. I mean, he's... He, but he just had a 20, 20 or 30 point week that week. That week, So I yeah. traded him. Mark Andrews, obviously, and that was a good sell. I said Mark Andrews is going to be the George Kittle this year, like the breakout tight end that nobody saw coming. Yeah. And cause, and I had t- I have Travis Kelsey as my tight end. I don't know if I said that, damn it. I have Travis Kelsey as my tight end. And uh, so that's another basically wide receiver. So I, I got him for the low, 
because I was like, I'm not even going to use this guy, so I might as well trade him. I had Mark Andrews. Um, and I, yeah, and so and then I traded Todd Gurley when Todd Gurley was putting up 25 points. He, I think he had two weeks in a row he put up over 20 points. And I was like, all right, I don't like Todd Gurley because he was only getting like six or seven attempts. But like he got like re- receiving touchdowns, so like it, it made him look like he was getting a lot of points. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I got to trade these guys quick. And so that's how I got Aaron Jones, Cooper Cup, and then you know the Barkley trade. Everybody else, I everybody else I picked up and I drafted, but everyone in my league is like, why did you people trade Kleist all these people? Like, <laughs> I put up two hundred and forty points one week, man. Holy shit! Yeah, PPR, PPR, like standard PPR. Like everybody on my team went off, and it was like the greatest fantasy week I've ever had in my life. Dang! Man. But now That's I'm playing. Cr- I'm playing Robbie next week. The winner gets two hundred bucks. It's, uh, when everybody, like, that's like the grand prize. There's nothing, like, second place doesn't get shit. So, um, it was a $20, $20 buy-in, so nothing. But this is why Robbie Straub is my figure-it-out person of the week. This man texts me, right, yesterday. Uh, and he said, hey, would you like to split the winnings now? And I said, what? He was like, just, he goes, I'll give you 100. You could take 100 right now, and I'll take the the other hundred and we just call it, we split it <laughs> i said boy what he goes we both have an equal chance of winning and not to gloat but my team's projected to beat him by like 20 so eh, it's not so not no, too you don't have an equal chance of it's winning. not that equal no yeah no, and i'm gonna come back with the yeah i mean i'll give you your buy-in back but that's it i'm taking the rest like that's the that's the um what I said in the beginning of the season, I said, winner, the, the top two people can decide, like, if, if second place gets money. Because I was like, you can either keep it all or second, you can give second place a little bit of money if you want to, if it was like a good game and you have respect for him. And I was going to do that. I was going to give him 20 bucks until he did this debacle. And he's like, yeah, let's split the earnings. What's the point? You split the earnings and then what? Then then the championship game doesn't matter. The championship game, I, I, I might as well not even like care. Like this is the point, man. This is the, this is what fantasy is about. It's like the championship game, like edge of your seat, waiting like like who's gonna win. Like after you split the earnings, then it's like oh the season's over. You know yeah, what I mean? That's not how gambling works. So so and yeah, he's a big gambling guy. He should know that. And he called me fake for that. And I'm like, no, man. Like that's. And and I remember uh, I told the story to other people and they're like, oh, but like, what if he wins and then you're screwed? Then you don't get any money. I'm like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> if he wins, he gets the fucking money. That's the point. <laughs> See, I I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something here. I did something similar to that. Oh no. <laughs> with Trent, uh, we were both in the the playoffs or the fi- the final um, final round. The championship. Championship, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> and uh, I, it, the payout was a lot, dude. I mean, we all put in a hundred bucks, and the payout was, I think it was fourteen hundred for first so, place. What for first place? Yeah, shut the fuck up. 14? Yeah, dude. No, what is it? Winner take all. It. I think it was winner take all, but second gets their money back. So it might have been thirteen hundred because it was a fourteen that's, person league. Wow, that's ridiculous. Uh, so I think we caught a deal where second place is going to get, I think it was, uh, four hundred, and then first place gets a thousand. So we did that, and I honestly I'm glad I did it because I would have been pissed if I walked away with like only my money back. I guess but <sighs> that's a little different because there's way more money on the line. Yeah, shit. But then, but and then I'd won, seem like so no I got, because I got the thousand bucks. But. Because then I seem do I seem like a hypocrite though when I say when I say when I'm like agreeing with you when I'm like damn like I would do that same thing but then I'm bitching at Robbie saying why would you do that? Well, because you got it. You, you, he he proposed it wrong. That's that's the issue there, right? So just a fifty fifty split. Fuck that. That's stupid. Yeah. You know, if you did like a like a 80, 80 20 split, so like you he who the winner gets eighty percent, the other person gets twenty percent, something yeah. like that. I mean that's more. But it's not worth it. It's two hundred bucks, you still bro. Want to win, you still want to win, but like, there's not as much pressure if you lose. So, I I get that. I get where he's kind of coming from. But I think he just probably phrased it wrong. I mean, yeah, and it's just not enough money to want to do that. Like, I'd be losing more money. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right, right, and yeah. For the amount of money you guys are doing, it's probably not worth it. But when but you're like, dealing with like, you put in a hundred bucks and then. 
like yeah, thousands. Like a thousand. It's definitely dollars. it's definitely different with yours because you still had an you still had a way to win a thousand dollars there. Like if yes. you won, if you lose, you get four hundred. If you win, you get a thousand. Like that's there's still something there. Me, if I win, I get a hundred. If I lose, I get a hundred. What the fuck's the point of that? Yeah, that's that's fucking stupid. So that that's and that just takes away it takes away the intensity, you know. Like I've been, I was so hyped, like I'm so hyped for this game. Like I, I can't wait to watch my fantasy team blow up. Like I just want to watch everyone. And if I lose, I lose, and I lose two hundred dollars, and that sucks because I've lost. I've I've been running this league for four years. I'm the commissioner. I've been. This will be my third championship I've gone to, and I haven't won ever. <laughs> Dang. I lost last year in the championship, and I lost my first year in the championship. Better show out this year, man. Yeah, I have to. I look like my, and you're a Marvel fan, right? You like the MCU? Oh yeah, absolutely. So my team name all year has been "I Am Inevitable." Do you get it? No. Thanos. <laughs> Thanos said that, man. I am inevitable. Okay, I mean that's a stretch. An end game, bro. Yeah, but bro, you're not a Marvel fan. Uh, I mean, I don't know. To be honest with you, I was drunk when I saw End Game. So you are not a Marvel <laughs> fan. Well, Thanos says that he says I am inevitable, and then snaps his fingers. You know, I, mean, I don't know. That part just didn't stick out to me. I don't know. He got his fucking head chopped off after he said that. I think I need to watch it again. You do. <laughs> Maybe you didn't watch it in the first place. It's been a while. Spoiler <laughs> alert, everybody. He gets his head chopped off in the first 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fuck cr- you. got to throw a spoiler alert there. That was crazy. But, um, no, yeah. So, and his name is I Am Iron Man. Because, you know, Iron Man did the snap. Yeah. So it's it's a classic matchup. Um, Robbie snuck into the playoffs 6 and 7, too. And I'm, hey. I'm, I was 11 and 2. So. so he's just happy to be there. That's why he's trying to cut a deal. He's just happy he made it. With six yeah, he seven. he beat some. He beat two good guys. The guy I just beat, he was five and one. He lost six straight, or he was six and seven, like on the verge of not making the playoffs. Or he was six and six, like he lost six in a row, and then he won his final matchup to get into the playoffs. <laughs> it was crazy, and I beat him, so that was nice. And he was Very talking nice. shit. But I, I don't like to talk shit. Like, this is why, like, I feel like I'm going to get bad karma now. Like, I don't like to talk shit. And, like, once the playoffs start, I send a message as the commissioner. I say, good luck to everybody. And then that's it. And then everybody else likes to talk shit and says, oh, why, why'd why you give Kleist all these players and stuff like that. And then I just stay quiet the whole time because I'm waiting. And if I win, that's when I'll talk. If I win the whole thing, I'll be like, thank you all for your donations uh, to, the, to the Kleist it. Foundation. It, right? Huh? You don't want to jinx it. Exactly, and I, I mean, I feel like I'm a little bit jinxing it because I'm talking shit about it right now, but I had to, I had to say it, bro. I had to say it, you know? Yeah. Like, that's, you, Robbie, you are my figure it out person of the week. Um, <laughs> I might, figure it out. Yeah, figure it out, Rob. Uh, let's, let's get into our week 16 picks. We'll wrap it up with these. Are you ready? I am ready. Who are we starting with? All right. And now, remember, there's no Thursday night football. It's Saturday games now. Very true, so yeah. That's pretty hype. That means we can get drunk on Saturday and watch games. Except I work on Saturday, so not really. And Sunday morning, so not really. Because my life sucks. But it's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my first game, uh, or the first game, is actually my upset of the week, which is crazy. Uh, Texans at Bucks. I'm going with the Bucks here. The Yucks. Uh, Jameis has been on a tear. He might be the first player in NFL history to lead the league in passing yards. <laughs> Passing touchdowns, he's only three behind Lamar, and he could easily catch up to him uh, at his pace, uh, and lead the league in interceptions because nobody's <laughs> nobody's breaking his interceptions right now. He's 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 like eight above the next guy. So, oh my god, yeah, that's but, crazy. But they've won four straight. You know they're on a bit of a tear right now, and uh, the Texans all they have is all they have is Deshaun Watson, and that's the only reason they're in games. So D-hop. I'm going with I'm going with the Bucks here to to win this game, D-hop. and it's at home. Yeah, the, yeah, D Hop too. But wide receivers don't make that big of a difference, in my opinion. It's it's the quarterback more than okay, anything. Okay, dude, settle down. 
The quarterback means more than a wide receiver. Are you telling right, me differently? I think, uh, I think Houston. I'm thinking Houston. Okay. I'm putting you down. I, are, you, yeah, you, are you writing this down? I'm writing them down because then I go over them the next week. Okay, cool. Next game, Bills at Patriots. This game was really tough for me to pick because the Bills are really hot. They and are. The they're Bills clearly – they got the better roster, in my opinion, like, than the Pats. And it went it, they went toe-to-toe uh, in their first matchup. And Pats barely slipped by. Um, but I'm gonna. I'm not gonna bet against Brady right now, and I'm going with the Patriots in Gillette. I'm going with the Patriots. Oh, so it is. It's in Foxborough. It's in Foxborough. Yeah. All right. I'm taking the Patriots too. Then tough. It's tough. If it I was want, in, I wanted to take take Buffalo. I know. I really like. There's a lot of those in this in this in this week. There's a lot of those where you're like, oh shit. Um, next, Rams at 49ers divisional matchup. Uh, count out the Rams all you want, but they're still, you know, they still got some talent, so you can't count them out. But uh, I'm definitely going to count them out because I'm going by the, I'm going with the 49ers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I, same, same thing here. I'm, I'm thinking 49ers. You can't count them out, but uh, I'm going to count them out. <laughs> Next, Steelers at Jets. Uh, the Jets are a dumpster fire. I'm going with the Steelers. Coming off a pretty heartbreaking loss, Mike Tomlin's my coach of the year candidate uh, on his like fourth. Yeah, I love I love Mike Tomlin. I mean, fourth he got big string on the sidelines too, being like another coach. So exactly, uh, he looks yeah, like a homeless know. man. Did you see him? He does. He does. He looks ridiculous. He looks like his freaking world is over. Good lord. Um. Yeah, I'm going with the Steelers here. What about you? Yeah, same Steelers. Damn, I hate Sam Darnold. I'm throwing that out there. I you hate him? him? What the I, hell? I, like, something about him, dude. I, I hate him. I <laughs> Please hate expand. Him. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just I don't I don't like his face. Um, <laughs> it just kind of pisses me off. He's got a punchable uh, face. That is true. What else? Uh, oh, dude, the fact that he has mono, and then like, <laughs> like who the fuck has mono if you're a professional? I don't know. Whatever. Even that. Okay, he has mono. Comes back. Says he's gonna run the table. Gets everybody behind him. And then goes and makes out with the girl at a club, just like that weekend. That's fucking absurd. You I are. I forgot jerk. about that. You are a fucking clown. That's so. I remember when he said he was going to run the table. Like, no, nobody was rallying behind that. They had like two wins at the time when he said that. Who'd they beat? They beat the Cowboys, I think. And he said we're going to run the table. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I hate Sam Darnold too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. He sucks. That guy sucks. The guy sucks. He needs to figure it out. He doesn't. Is he your figure it out person of the week? Yeah, he's my figure it out of the, <laughs> the year. Of the year. Good lord. Uh, next game: Saints at Titans. Another one. One of the. Another one of those games. Like the Titans are hot, man. You can't count them out. Nah, yeah. I don't think the Titans are as good as everybody thinks, dude. I don't think Ryan Tannehill is the guy. They've won six of the last seven with him. Yeah, but I just don't think he's the guy. I, you think he's better than Marcus Mariota? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's better than Mariota, but I don't think he's the guy. Chase would be pissed at me for this one because Chase loves uh, Ryan Tannehill. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he's the guy. I think Tennessee's they're they're good. They're not going to be New Orleans. So what, it's if, at it's at it's Tennessee. in Tennessee. Uh, I'm Music still, City. I'm sticking with it. I'm picking New Orleans. I'm going with New Orleans too. Um, would you, would you give Ryan Tannehill if you're the Tennessee Titans? Are you giving them him an extension? Think about that. Um, uh, like a year, maybe. So, like franchise tag him, maybe. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. That's what I'll do. I'd franchise tag him, see if he can perform again the next year, and then if he can, then maybe give him some money. But well, because I don't think it, he's gonna perform again. They're they're gonna probably end up going nine and seven or eight and eight, which is like the Tennessee Titans every year. But it like that's too good of a record to get a top quarterback. You know what I mean? To pick up a new guy and start over, like you yeah. might as well. Like you can't well, that's, tank. That's, that's what I'm saying. So tag him for a year, give him another year to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying figure it out way too much. No, it's uh, just it's just part of conversation. People don't understand, but it's my favorite <laughs> phrase. Yeah, I still get people asking me what FIO what's what's FIO stand for when I'm in my FIO podcast. I'm like, good lord, woman, figure it out. <laughs> Why don't you just figure it out? Next, Panthers at Colts. Another one of those games where, you know, either way, you know, like, I'm going with the Colts, though. I like Jacoby Brissett. I think they have the better roster. I think they just got embarrassed by the by the breeze. 
uh, by the Saints. <laughs> And uh, I think they're going to come off a – I'm going to go super cowherd right here. When when a team gets embarrassed on national television, they usually come back and win, especially at home against a bad Panthers team, pissed about Ron Rivera firing. Yeah, I was going to say that's kind of what does it for me. I mean, with Ron Rivera you know, losing the head coach, I, I'm taking the Colts. Did you think that was a good move, getting rid of Ron and Rivera? Uh, yeah, so I know I knew you were going to bring this up. <laughs> uh, I mean, probably not. At the time that they did it, I don't think firing a coach in the middle of the season is ever really the answer unless they're just fucking awful. Yeah. But and, I mean, he and, went to a Super Bowl. Bad. I mean, they had the tools. They had the tools to be good. He was coach uh, of the year in 2015. Was, what? He was coach of the year in 2015, went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, they have the tools. He, I don't know if he was the problem or not. Um, I would have given him the rest of the year to maybe see if he could do a little something. But yeah. uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't hate the idea of firing him because at some point you got to shake things up, try something else. So, yeah. What if he goes to the, uh, the Cowboys next year? Oof. Yeah, Jason Garrett. He needs to get out of there. Yeah, he does. Um, John, dude, if, I mean, if 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 they if they ended up going to the playoffs and like winning the first round, I mean. He might stay. He might stay around. No, bro. it's not him, man. It's not him. Like nobody gives him any credit for when they blew out the the Rams. They literally weren't giving him any credit. Yeah. Next is the Fuck Jason Garrett, though. Yeah, figure it out, Jason Garrett. <laughs> Next is the shit bowl. I'm talking about the shit bowl. The Bengals at the Dolphins. Oh, mama! <laughs> I like that one. Uh... You already know my feelings on this one from what I said about my guy earlier, Andy Dalton. Uh, I'm going with the the Bengals. You're going with the Bungles? The Bungles. Yeah, dude. Dude, yeah. What were you saying about Andy Dalton earlier? You think – you realize the Bengals are taking Joe Burrow first overall, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But no, no, no. The thing is, dude, uh, I mean – well, what did I say? I said Andy Dalton is – Just feels right. It feels right. It, it just does. He belongs there. I mean, they got the orange, you know, bees for the Bengals, and he's got orange hair. It just, it feels right, you know? He's he not good. He always, and they're never going to be great, but he needs to be there at the helm manning the ship. He could be the backup that just gives advice. Yeah, could, yeah. He well, could be the backup he, face of the franchise. I don't know. I don't know if that's enough. We'll see. Is that is it, are you considering that your upset of the week? Is that an upset? I mean, the Dolphins have a better record. I mean, the Dolphins are fucking garbage too. They so. have three wins though. The Bengals have one. I guess sure. That's that's my upset of the week. Then. No, you got to pick a better one than that. We'll see. <laughs> Why you you baited me into that? I did bait. You can pick that. <laughs> that is an upset. So you did pick an upset, but you need an upset of the week. So, all right, all right. Let's keep them rolling. I only have one upset so far as the Bucks, so I need to I need to pick more. Uh, next, Ravens at Browns. Do the Browns pull off the sweep? They beat the Ravens earlier in the year. No, not, <laughs> not a chance. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah, Ravens. Next one. <laughs> Ravens. Are, yeah, not even going. MVP. No. Uh, Jags at Falcons. Minshew Mania still getting the start. Against the Falcons, Matty Ice getting that big win over the 49ers. Nah, I like the Falcons in this one, I think. Um, it's at home, right? Yep, in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, I like them. And again, the Falcons are another one of those teams where it's like, it just feels like they should win, you know? They <laughs> What's with you and feeling, dude? I, dude, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, betting is an emotional thing, all oh, right? I get, I get attachments to teams and like how things should be. And uh, that's another one where I think, like, at home, you're not going to beat the Falcons. And uh, this is why I'm uh, in uh, in a lot of debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is why I have uh, a second mortgage on my home. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Giants at Skins. The other shit bowl. <laughs> uh, I'm taking... Is Eli playing? That's, a, that's It a looks like Daniel Jones is coming back. Oh, then I'm taking the skins. <laughs> You're going with the red skins. All right. If only Case Keenan was playing. Yeah, man. For real. I was pissed when they took him out of the game. I mean, yeah, he had a concussion, yes. but fuck it. 
Uh, I'm going with the Giants here. Uh, I think they're the better of the two. Shit. So, uh, yeah, Dan- Danny Dimes going to go out there, show uh, Eli Manning how it's done, and uh, pull off the victory. I would not be surprised if the Redskins win, though. It's you know, it's in Washington. I like Adrian Peterson. You know, just uh, past uh, or uh, Chris Johnson too. I mean, dude, they got they got some weapons out of Washington. I mean, yeah, um, AP just just passed uh, who do you, he's top five now in touchdowns and rushing yards. Yep, yeah, Crazy. I saw that first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, next, Lions at oh shit, Lions at Broncos. All right, so this is gonna be my upset of the week. I'm going <laughs> with the Lions. That's tough. They basically have like the same record though. Yeah, but I mean, I'm looking at the spread right now. Denver's favored by six and a half, so that's definitely I'm picking the Lions. Um, I'm going. The Lions with... are good, dude. The li- are li- not not good, but they should be good. I think it, it just feels like they should be good. No, 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 no. This one isn't a feel. They should be good. They've gotten fucked by the refs, and they have that like they have a fuck ton of injuries. Carry on so, Johnson's it's... coming back this game. Who? Carry on Johnson, the running back that. Won. Oh, he is. He is. I didn't hear that. He um, went on IR. Yeah. So that's well. Another thing. Another reason why the Lions are going to win right there. I'm picking the Broncos. Only if uh, Kyle Sloter does not start. If Kyle Sloter starts this game, I'm going with the Lions. But it's <laughs> right. not looking like he's going to start. It looks like David Blow is going to get one more, one more start in there. But I'm going with the Broncos. They have a you know sneaky top ten defense that's going to get to the quarterback very easily. And as you saw with the Vikings game, if you can get to David Blow, he'll blow it. So uh, yeah, I'm going with the Broncos here. Next, Raiders at Chargers. Uh, Raiders lost their last home game in Oakland, getting booed off the field. Derek Carr was booed off the field. Uh, just such a Chargers way to way to go out there. But I'm going to go with the Raiders. I'm going to go with the Raiders. I think the Chargers are just a dumpster fire right now. I think Phil Rivers is talks too much shit when he's down by forty. And uh, yeah, I'm going with the Raiders here. I agree. I'm picking Raiders. The Raiders. <laughs> Uh, Cardinals at Seahawks. Yeah, Seahawks. This is going to be an upset for me. I'm going with the Cardinals. Uh, no way, yep. man. No way. Seahawks have not been a good home team this season, which usually they have been in years past. Uh, Russell Wilson's a better road quarterback than home quarterback. Callum Murray's is sending. I think that, uh... The Seahawks defense does bad against mobile quarterbacks that we've seen. It's not the it's not the defense that we've seen in the past. Uh, and the Vikings but really again, need the Seahawks like to lose. They should be the defense of the past. <laughs> Anytime you play Seahawks at home, you just think that the defense is going to be unstoppable. Exactly, but I mean, we put up thirty on them, so yeah, true, true, true. Um, um, I I definitely go with Seahawks on this one. In fact, I mean, I'm so confident about that. I would put twenty bucks on it with you right now if you want to do it. Oh, shit, can we do like five? I'm poor. No, twenty. Come on, man up. I'm not doing twenty on a fucking the Cardinals. Are you joking? It's Kyler Murray. <laughs> it's a fucking right, fine, fine. It's a bro. podcast. I'm not putting money on this shit. Anyway, I think that this not and, confident in your picks. The Vikings really need this the Seahawks to lose, so that's why I picked the Cardinals. Because maybe my mojo will be good. Next game, this one's going to be tough to choose. In my opinion, it was Cowboys at Eagles. This is the decider right here. This is I think this I think this is the game that decides who goes who hosts the playoff game. Do you want to? It is. Yeah, it's pretty huge. And I'm and I really don't want the Eagles hosting a playoff game. I don't want them to catch fire. They have nobody but Carson Wentz, but. Did you see that throw he had, man, last week? Past yeah. two people in the end zone? Good lord, that's probably the best throw all year. Uh, that's two game-winning drives by Carson Wentz. But I'm going with the Cowboys here. I think they have the momentum. Uh, I think they have the way better roster and they're healthier. Uh, Zeke's found his footing. So, yeah, I'm going by the. I'm going with the Cowboys. Yeah, me too. I'm going Cowboys. They got Jason Garrett, so. <laughs> so they're <laughs> pretty much going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all the way. No, I, in all seriousness, no, I, I agree with uh, most of what you said there. Um, the Eagles' defense is pretty bad. They don't have any wide receivers um, other than Ertz. And, yeah, he's uh, always their best. The Cowboys, they do. They have all the tools to be good. 
and they made it work last game. So, I mean, I think they'll probably continue it. And next game, Chiefs at Bears. So, yeah, Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chiefs. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, it's nah, nah, yeah, Chiefs. <laughs> Come on, man. Trubisky. Yeah, Chiefs. I, is Trubisky the quarterback of the future for the Bears? Oh, absolutely not. Well, I mean, for the Vikings' sake, we hope so. Right, right. I hope he is. Even though he's never lost to us. I hope you know that. He's he's I think he's 3 and 0 against us. Fuck, really? Yeah, he he beat he swept us last year and he beat us earlier this year. We need to win against him uh week 17. Uh, last week of the game. Uh, Shit, am I am I boring season. you, man? Are you yawning right now? Oh, dude, it's late. It's my bedtime. Man. I know. Oh, man. We're almost done. We're almost done. Last last one. Game of the week. Monday night football. Green oh. Bay Packers at Minnesota Vikings at U.S. Bank Billion Dollar Stadium in beautiful <clears throat> Minneapolis, Minnesota. Woo! Let's get into it. What do the Vikings need to do to win this game? Uh, Defense. If their defense can play like we did against the Chargers, like even a tenth as good of that, yeah. I think we got this. If we get like hard. two turnovers instead yeah, of seven, yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, it's it's all gonna come down to our defense, which is exactly what Zim wants. That's what Zim likes. He so he excels in that type of uh, environment, that type of game. So I mean, it, it that's what it comes down to. It comes down to our coverage and our secondary being able to contain Aaron Rodgers to a low scoring game, and then just running the ball. I think Cook is going to be back. I don't see him being out this game. Um, I think he's going to be fine. Yeah, it was precautionary that took we'll him out. More weapons on uh, as receivers too. I think we got it. Yeah, I think we have the better roster. I'm not afraid of Green Bay whatsoever, especially at home. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Say whatsoever. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, they do still have Aaron Rodgers, where he can always pull some shit out of his ass or cheat, like he literally cheat. cheats. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a roughing the passer call because anytime Minnesota plays them, if we touch them at all, the refs will be all over our ass about that. So yeah, I hope Anthony Barr kills him again. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Good Lord. I had so many salty Packers fans on on my ass about that. I remember when that hit happened. I was like, yeah, hey, it was illegal. But that, and then everybody bitches about, like, I remember Packers, like Clay Matthews the very next year on the Packers. Yep. He had like five roughing the passer calls. Was like the most of his career, and he and he would complain on each one of them. It was like, thank your quarterback for that. Thank your quarterback because he's the one that made that a rule. Yes, yeah, I agree. Aaron I remember Rodgers that happening rule. too, and uh, everybody bitching about it. And I was like, dude, that's what. I mean, that's what happened to Aaron Rodgers, and that's why it's a thing. So. Yeah, but um, I obviously we're both going Vikings here, so that's it. That's an easy pick. I think. Yeah, we do need to. I'm I'm afraid to start Aaron Jones in fantasy, honestly, because we're playing. You know, our defense is playing so well right now that he might pull, pull, hang an egg up there. You know. Yeah, I mean, maybe I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> say it's likely, but it I got Joe Mixon on chance. my bench. He's playing Miami this week. He's projected like 17 points. But do yeah, I really start? Well, do I really start Joe Mixon in my fantasy championship? Or do I start Aaron Jones, who has you fourteen start Aaron touchdowns? Jones. You gotta do it. Fourteen touchdowns. No, Dude, that way, nineteen. That way, nineteen you're touchdowns. Also, you're protected from the emotional loss, right? So if Minnesota loses and gets run over by Green Bay, then at least you did well in fantasy, right? At least I get two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Jesus, you gotta hedge your bets. I should say it'll be one hundred and eighty dollars because one of the bastards in my league didn't pay. And everyone was so good. Everyone was so good about paying because we, you know, what we did. We said if you pay, whoever gets to pay gets to gets their name in a hat for you get to pick your draft slot. So if like if I draw your name first, you get to pick wherever you want to draft first. You know what I mean? So like you get you could pick, you could be like third overall if you wanted, third overall pick if you wanted. So that's, that's just I mean that's kind of what Trey did. With our league, but he said that you couldn't straight pick up, pick the spot you want. Yeah, so like the first the first person to get their their payment in could pick first place or first uh, first pick, and then second person could pick you know twelfth pick something like that. Yeah, that's um, that's basically what we it, did. And then it keeps going until like you know the 
the guy who's like eight or nine getting their thing done, they'll they'll get the lesser picks. Well, we were gonna say like if it was a live draft and I and I, I then I would be like if your pick is an in by the draft, you get auto drafted. Like you're auto drafted until the twenty dollars is in my hand. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is hardcore. But like that's how you get money. And it was good. I have hundred and eighty dollars sitting in my in my Venmo right now, ready to get distributed. And that guy actually made the playoffs, and he was, like, talking all this shit, saying and he lost first round, obviously. But he's like, oh, I'll pay the winner. But I know if I win, he's not going to pay me because he's a fucking bastard. <laughs> but – and I told him – or I didn't tell him this, but I told other people. I said, if he wins, I'm going to give him $1 a week. That's how it works. I said, you get, a, you get an allowance, son. You get $1 a week. That's how this works. <laughs> <laughs> until it's for 200 weeks you get one dollar a week and i because it's my it's i control the money and he can't say it's my money you give it to me because he didn't pay it's none of it's his money <laughs> right yeah you know what yeah, I, mean? no, I agree so uh, but he we, lost we had a problem with uh, like a year or two ago when uh in the tennessee league ryan wouldn't pay and uh i think somebody started like slashing his points by like in half the commissioner did. You can and do for that? Every week that he didn't play, like, he would, like, literally slash his points in half. So, like, he lost the first four games until, like, he finally was like, all right, I'll give you the 20 bucks, whatever. Shit, if I lost the first four games, I'd be like, fuck it, I'm already out. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, I I actually had some problems this year in my Kentucky draft. Had a new guy in there, said he knew a lot about fantasy, made some terrible trades. I had a veto. So, he's not coming back next year. But what was the whole... The worst part was he didn't make the playoffs. Obviously, he only won like four games. Immediately drops every player he has on on his team. You never want to see that, you know. Drops his entire team, and then, um, thankfully, I was the commissioner, so I was I I found out you could do this. I just put all of his players back on his team that he dropped, and then I deleted him. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so he like deleted the owner. So the team's still there. So in case I want to do a keeper league, I'll just be like, like, I'll pick somebody else up. I'll take someone, like, you could be in it, and I'll be like, all right, you can pick one of his players. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, gotcha. That's cool. Yeah, so fuck him <laughs> for that. And I I just can't stand that. It just takes away the integrity of the game. But hopefully I win this week. Hopefully I get $200 richer. That would be nice. You know, a big win over Robbie would be nice. So... Please, yeah, man. Uh, hope you uh, hope you get it there. Best of luck to you. Well, thanks for coming on the pod, man. This has been a great episode. Yeah, man, I had a blast. Thanks for having me. And uh, last thing I got for you is Skull Vikes. Yes, baby, Skull Vikes. I mean, I feel like we didn't talk enough about the Vikings, but it's okay. You know, we don't want to get we don't want to be too biased here. Yeah, yeah, you got to balance it out. And we, I mean, we got we got a little bit of the Vikings and talk in there. Too, no, yeah, so. definitely. But, yeah, we'll have to get you back on the pod sometime. Always a good time. Well, hell yeah, brother. Looking forward to it. All right, man. We better go to a Vikings game next year. The The opponents are already out. I saw the opponents. Like, who, oh, really? who we're going to play. So, it's. I think we're playing the AFC South. So, like, the Texans, the Colts, and all them. Yeah, let's throw it together, man. Let's do it. Especially if we play in Tennessee, if we play the Titans. It'd be kind of cool. Go to Nashville for the weekend? I, I, well, yeah, actually, I'd, I'd be down for Nashville. I want to go to a home game though, for sure. I like I like going to US Bank. I like it a lot. Yeah, we should go to like another. We should go to a Packers game, man. The Packers at Vikings next year. Yeah, I'm down. That'd be huge. Cause yeah, cause I'll be off. Cause my my work has the probation, so I can't go anywhere like vacation for the first six months. So I have like three more months of that, and then I can do whatever I want. Okay. Well, yeah, dude, let's set it up. I'm hype, man. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on. Yep. Talk to you, you later. It, Take it easy. And that was T. Sweeney, Tyler Sweeney. Always good to have him on. A lot longer show this time. Thank you guys for sticking around. If you guys are still listening, if you guys skip to the to just the picks, I know uh, some of you do that. But, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you tune in next week. Skull Vikes. Good luck to all the fantasy managers out there. That are going to try and win their championship the games this year. This is what it's all about. This is what you drafted for. This is what you've grinded for all year. This is what you trade raped for. Get to the postseason any way you can. Whatever it takes. And win that money. 
Let's go. Let's fucking go. Skull Vikes. This has been it. This has been the FIO Podcast. I'm your host, Mason Kleist. Thank you all for listening. Figure it out.